Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be sharing a story with you. Our movie opens up with a beautiful girl named Carola and her boyfriend of two years, Stefan, on a beach. They're currently enjoying their last day of vacation in Kenya, Africa. Stefan asks her if they can go visit a town called Mombasa. Carola tells him that she wanted to spend their last day on the beach, but eventually gives in to her boyfriend. On the ferry, she sees a Maasai warrior, who's a tribesman and instantly feels attracted to him. When the couple get to town, Stefan decides to go get some pot from a shady dude. The shady guy tells the couple to follow and wait for him in an alley, but soon the man appears with two other thugs, and the couple find out they're robbers and quickly run away, as these robbers give chase. Now as they're running away, they run into the Maasai warrior again, and he easily scares the thugs away by his mere presence. They then escort the couple to the ferry to keep them safe. When the couple return to the city, they unfortunately miss their bus to their hotel. The warriors see this, so they decide to offer him a ride. At the hotel, now Kerala invites him in for a drink to thank him for all their help. But Stefan starts arguing with her, as he really doesn't want to spend his last day with strangers and wants time with her alone. However, Kerala is adamant about spending time with the warriors, so she goes alone. Now at the bar, Kerala and this Maasai warrior, Lamalian, start dancing, slowly getting closer with each other. Just then, Stefan catches him and instantly gets mad at Lamalian. Kerala quickly takes her boyfriend away before a fight can escalate and bids goodbye to her crush. Now at the airport the next morning, Kerala gets second thoughts and decides to not go back with Stefan. The couple get into an argument where Carol is telling him that she wants to stay behind and explore the Maasai culture more. So a frustrated Stefan leaves alone while Carola heads back to find Lamalian. Back at the bar, she finds out from some fellow warriors that Lamalian has gone back to his village. So Carola makes her way to said village. On one of her pit stops, she meets another foreigner named Elizabeth who has chosen to live in Kenya after she'd also met a man. Elizabeth warns Kerala that if she were to stay in the village where Lamalian's from, she would have to endure harsh conditions, because they really don't have access to water or electricity in that part of the country. But despite hearing that warning, Kerala doesn't heed that advice, continuing to ask her where to find Lamalian. Seeing there's no point in trying to convince her anymore, Elizabeth tells her that she has to wait for Lamalian to come find her, because no one can just go to the Maasai village without an invitation. So Kerala stays at Liz's home in the meantime. Now after 10 days, Lamalian goes to find her, and the both of them instantly feel an intense connection towards each other. The two start getting crazy, and after spending the night together, Lamalian takes Kerala to his village. He introduces her to members of his family and takes her into his small home. After hanging out with the family a little, Carola decides to find Lamalian who's hunting. She sees her future boyfriend drinking the blood of a hunted goat and gets shocked by that culture. She then goes back and waits for him to return. When he does, she tries to cuddle with him, but Lamalian pushes her away because it's against his culture for a man to be intimate with a woman when others are present. I mean, obviously. So the next day, Carola finds out more about these cultural differences, such as women aren't allowed to undress to take a bath in front of men. Later, a customs officer comes to find Carola in the village, where he tells her that foreigners are not allowed to stay with the Maasai tribe unless they're born there, married to a resident of the tribe, or have a special visa. So in order to stay longer, she and Lamalian go to the city together to get an extension and a special visa. When they arrive, the couple start having some alone time with each other, and their love soon grows stronger. But one night, as Lamalian goes to buy food in a store, Carola faints outside. Lamalian quickly finds out she has malaria and goes to treat her. After she recovers, Carola decides to buy a truck, and together they'll drive back to the village. They then try to take Lamalian's family out for a trip in that truck, but just then, his mother starts scolding him for letting a woman drive, as the man should be the one leading all the time. With no choice, Lamalian takes the wheel but soon crashes the truck. This kind of angers Carola, so she starts scolding him, making him leave. Now realizing she overreacted, she quickly drives to him and apologizes, and they all head back to the village. As the days pass, Kerala's visa runs out again, so Lamalian asks her to marry him, to which she agrees. However, she tells him that she has to go back to Switzerland, her home country, to first say goodbye to her family and settle some personal affairs. With no choice, he lets her leave, while she promises to return. Now in Switzerland, Carola's announcement of marrying a tribesman causes her family to be upset. Her family try to warn her as she's making a big mistake, but she doesn't listen and insists on getting married. The next day, she shuts down her clothing business and returns back to Kenya to marry Lamalian. 
On the day of their wedding, Kerala puts on a traditional white dress, while Amalian's in his warrior garb, and the two finally become husband and wife. The following morning, Kerala wakes up and sees the women of the village circumcising a young girl. Horrified by that, she calls Lamalian over to try to stop him, but he doesn't do anything and says it's tradition for a girl to become a woman. Kerala leaves upset with such a disgusting tradition. Now things are starting to become a little worse, when Kerala, who's now pregnant, decided to open up a shop and sell food and drinks. But Lamalian doesn't really like that idea, because the women of the village are supposed to stay home and take care of the family. So they soon get into an argument, but suddenly one of the tribe's people finds Kerala and brings her to a pregnant woman who has collapsed. Kerala quickly asks the people around for help, but they don't assist her, as they think the pregnant woman has been cursed. Kerala eventually gets the woman on the truck and quickly heads to the city. However, the truck unfortunately breaks down and eventually, the child in the mother's belly passes away, leaving Kerala sad and traumatized finding it hard to adapt to her new life. Now after a little while, she finally starts her shop. And because of her experience, her business flourishes. But Lamalian starts to get bitter of his wife's success as he feels he's no longer the provider of the family. He also starts feeling jealous of other men as Kerala is always smiling to the male customers, making him feel disrespected. Now one day, Lamalian confronts his wife, thinking that she's cheating on him. Kerala tries to convince him that she's not cheating on him, but he doesn't believe her and storms out. The couple's relationship gets exponentially worse, with Kerala finding out that Lamalian Malian has been giving away free food and drinks to all his friends. She tells him that the shop is a business and that he can't keep doing that. So they soon get into another fight with him leaving. Now one night, Kerala goes into labor and is rushed to a nearby hospital in the city to give birth. Luckily, she gives birth to a healthy baby and the couple celebrate this joyful occasion back in the village. So the next day, Kerala goes back to check on her shop, but she finds out that her shop doesn't have any products anymore due to Lamalian's constant generosity. So the following day, she starts acting strict with his friends and doesn't allow him to have any more free stuff. Lamalian tries to stop her, but she's not listening. Now months are passing and Lamalian slowly starts feeling he is no longer the man of the family, as Carol is now a successful business owner and he is just the helper in the store. One night, he loses it and calls his wife a prostitute, thinking that she's sleeping with her customers to get them to buy from her shop. So that leads to a heated battle, but other men from the tribe stop Lamalian before he can do anything worse to his wife. The next morning, a still frustrated Lamalian cuts off his hair and dresses in modern clothing and finds Kerala. He asks her if she respects him more now, since she's always smiling at other men dressed like this. A man then walks in and he immediately thinks the man is sleeping with his wife. Luckily, Kerala manages to stop him and a frustrated Lamalian leaves. So later back at the village, Kerala tells her husband that she wants to take her daughter to Switzerland to let her family meet her, and he agrees to it. As she leaves, Lamalian's suspicions start popping up when Kerala asks him to sign a form at the immigration center. Being unable to read, he questions his wife about it, but she says it's nothing, so he eventually signs it. He asks Kerala to promise him to return back, and she promises. She then boards the bus, but just before she leaves, Lamalian says that he knows she won't be coming back anymore. Kerala doesn't say anything and leaves. The movie ends with Kerala shedding a tear as she leaves her life with Lamalian behind forever. Thank you for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe, and we hope to catch you on the next one.